In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a caustics effect that you may want to use in certain types of scenes. Blender 3.2 produces two caustic types. One is part of the brute force ray tracing process, and the other is a fast approximation mechanism that's new to 3.2 called shadow caustics. If we take a look at this scene right here, this is default what Blender would render with these rings. But I want to have these caustics appear. Caustics are a particular type of light that is reflected off very shiny surfaces that forms these light patterns. They can be very, very useful in creating realism for things like jewelry or even product visualization. For instance, these product bottles, you can see the caustics that are forming. Those pose problems for a ray tracing system because caustics can end up producing quite a lot of noise in a scene. As a result, Cycles has a few mechanisms in place to help reduce this noise, but the side effect of this noise suppression is the reduced appearance of caustics. The brute force ray tracing mechanism is more time consuming, but works on both reflective and refractive surfaces. Shadow caustics need to be enabled as a feature while standard ray trace caustics are by default suppressed, and those suppressing mechanisms need to be disabled. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the new Blender 3.2 Shadow Caustics feature. Shadow Caustics only work in shadow regions produced through refractive or transparent objects. It's an approximation mechanism. It also only works with direct light sources, meaning it doesn't also work with HDRI light sources. So the first thing that we need to do is I'm going to come over to the ground plane right here, and we come over to the object properties palette, and there's a caustics entry down here. And we're just going to come over here and tell this to be a caustics receiving surface. So the next thing that we need to do is come to each of the three objects that we want to be casting caustics, and enable it on each one. And then the final thing that we need to do is find our light source. I have a single light right here, and we're going to come down to the light icon, the object data properties for lights, and we need to enable shadow caustics. Boom, and there they go. So the nice thing about this is it's pretty interactive. I can come over pretty easily and move this around and you can see the shadow caustics forming. One limitation is the caustics are only going to appear in the shadow regions. If you've used other 3D applications that have photon mapping technology, those caustics can appear anywhere, including the shadows, but also outside of the shadows. And that's not how shadow caustics work. It has some limited application and you can play with it. They're kind of fun to play with, but I don't think they're as flexible as the true ray traced caustics mechanism. So you can see here, we're getting caustics through these two objects, but this one right here, which has a separate object forming the liquid, it's not casting caustics, it's a nested shape. And I have found through practice that it doesn't work on those. So this is just gonna be something in your arsenal of tools to work with and play with and discover if it's gonna be useful for you. The other limitation, at least on the Mac, which I'm on right now, is that it does not currently work with GPU. It only works in CPU mode. The next thing is we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at the true ray tracing caustics because this, to me, is where the fun is at. Brute force caustics are simply part of the ray tracing system. They're not a separate process like photon mapping used in some applications. They're produced from both direct and indirect light sources. This means from point, spot, and area lights or from HDRI images, which we consider indirect lighting. But a problem with the ray tracing process is that a lot of noise can appear, which can be hard to get rid of if there are very sharp reflective or refractive objects combined with intense light sources. So by default, Blender uses two mechanisms to reduce noise. The first one that we're gonna look at is called filter glossy. This mechanism attempts to diffuse focused light reflecting off highly glossy, low roughness, metallic types of surfaces. The caustics effect is happening because light on very sharply shiny surfaces that are highly reflective form those caustic effects, but they can also produce a lot of noise. The more the surface is rough, the more diffuse the caustics are going to be. 
The filter glossy mechanism makes light bounce off highly reflective surfaces as though they're more rough while maintaining the visual of a sharply reflective surface. That being said, let's come in here and take a look at what happens. I'm going to come in and enable our renderer here. And we see these rings. If you look, you can very, very carefully see just a little bit of gold tint inside of here from the light bouncing off of the gold. But the gold is pretty sharply reflective and the caustic should be more formed. And we also have the diamonds here. That's gonna be a whole separate component that we're gonna look at here in a minute. So the first thing that we do is we come in and we take a look at setting the filter glossy mechanism. It's down here under caustics. And all you have to do is set this to zero and watch what happens. We see those caustics begin to appear from our direct light source. The cool thing about that is it's pretty easy to turn them on, but we're not done yet. Let's take a look really quick at what this is doing. I have three cubes and they're just metallic. They're the same metal that I'm using on those gold rings. And we see just this hint of gold you know, coloration in the scene, but they should be really focused reflections, but the filter glossy mechanism is what's hindering this. So if we come over here to filter glossy down here, and now we set this to zero, watch what happens. Note the appearance of these caustics as they begin to come forward. So what's happening is it's making the light bounce off of these surfaces exactly as we see these surfaces as sharply reflective surfaces. So that's all that Filter Glossy does, is it kind of is performing a trick in a way. It's sweeping these caustics under the rug by making the light bounce off of those surfaces in a diffuse type of way, even though they're sharply reflective. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is clamping. So this has a little bit of a different effect on the surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to pull back up the rings. So when I start rendering these rings, we can see that in fact, we're seeing the caustics. It's very apparent, but there's still something missing. We have these diamonds over here and they're a little bit lackluster. And it seems to me we can see a few little specks. And granted, this is the preview renderer, so we're not getting the full effect. But the second mechanism is clamping. Clamping suppresses very, very bright rays that can cause significant noise in the scene. This significant brightness tends to show up in sparklies or fireflies, as they're called. But it can really affect certain things like the diamonds. So what we do is we come over to clamping right here, where it says indirect light. By default, it's set to 10, and for many scenes, that default is actually very good. The higher it goes, the less clamping there's going to be. If I set this to a value of 1, it would have a significant clamping effect. So let's just set this to 1. You can see how it's really attenuated the caustics right there, but it's really taken the life out of the scene too. So setting it to 0 turns it off, so there's no light clamping at all. And now when we turn it back on, you can start to see we're seeing much brighter sort of caustics through the diamonds over here, and our caustics are brighter. So again, let me set this back to 10, and we can see certainly the caustics appearing, but it's attenuated around the diamond, and when I set this back down to zero, we get the full effect. It is not clamping anything. Now I want to talk about a couple of things. As soon as you turn off these filtering and clamping mechanisms, you are going to have to start dealing with more noise in the scene. And so consequently, the renders are going to take longer and you're going to have to let the sample rate go up higher. And even though we have the noise reduction mechanism, if there's still too much noise in the scene, it can end up creating kind of somewhat blotchy noise reduction results. But in my particular case, I've got the diamonds and the rings, and it turns out that the diamonds here are more affected by the clamping than the caustics inside of the diamond are. These are just a couple of things you can play with, but as soon as you set indirect clamping to zero and filter glossy to zero, you're getting the most accurate ray tracing. Even if it's going to take longer to clear up the noise, it's going to give you a better glass, it's going to give you a more sparkly diamond, and it's going to give you brighter caustics, reflective caustics. Another thing to remember when working with caustics 
that how well they are defined directly relates to the size and intensity of the light source that's causing the caustics. In this particular case, my light right here, I have the radius set to three inches. You can see that the caustics are not super well defined. If I take that down to 1.5 inches, they become a little bit better defined. Finally, if I take this light source radius down to half an inch, then those caustics become even more well-defined. But it's going to take longer to resolve given the newer, higher level of samples that you're going to have to use. So as soon as you turn these two features off, you're probably going to have to up the number of samples that you're using for your final render right here. Going up to 3,000, even 4,000 samples for your final render is not going to be a bad idea. In this age of very fast and powerful GPUs and fast, powerful CPUs, it really isn't that big of a deal to throw that many samples at a scene to get sufficient noise reduction for the noise reducing feature to work correctly. And these are just things you're going to have to experiment with.